Is your mustache good? I would hope so. Oh. Lights, makeup, camera, action. <laughs> <glue> it on. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 19. Yes, I do know which one it is today because I checked the last one for, for a change. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about low rolling. Low rolling. What does that mean? What are the benefits? How to do it? And so forth. So prepare your questions. And if you have some other questions, we're going to try to address them as well. But we try to aim for 20 minutes, so we'll see how far we get. So flow rolling. Oh, we're, we're off. We're off. <laughs> you should have stretched. <laughs> that was the best guy. So, so this brings us to a good point. All right. So, guys, flow rolling is different from drilling. I believe it's an extremely important tool to get your game really sharp. But the focus of flow rolling on what you're trying to improve is your transition and instincts as well as escapes. So it doesn't mean that you avoid submissions. It does not mean that you avoid certain positions. So neck, uh, my shin on, on Enrique's neck. I will do it. If we're going live, I'm going to put all my weight. But, <laughs> but if we're going flow rolling, I'm, not, I'm putting it in precise position without actually putting the weight on. So he needs to respect that position and it has to react accordingly. All right? So that brings us to... Some very, very important points. Again, guys, sometimes people take flow rolling as flopping around, you know, where you don't go for submissions. You know, people say, oh, you don't hunt for submissions in flow rolling. Then what's the point? Might as well do jumping jacks, right? So I think flow rolling is extremely important. I believe that the top level guys do this. Well, I know they do it. Uh, the most important thing is is to have a good training partner because you need reciprocity, you know. But basically, what is flow rolling? It's a lower intensity, okay? But you want to work your precision. You still want to be precise. So you don't avoid submissions. You hit them, but what you do is you do catch and release. So if I hit a submission, what I do is, is get to the point where I know where Enrique taps, and then I let him escape. So that way I know where it's going. So if the guy should escape in live rolling, I know exactly how to follow up with, with additional techniques. So again, flow rolling is different from drilling. In flow rolling, you're working on transitions to hone your instincts. And also, if I catch Enrique, In flow roll, and I hit this arm bar. So in flow, in, in, in normal live training, we're done, okay? But in flow rolling, when I catch him, he taps, I lighten up. So I know he shoves my leg down. So my initial response was poor, right? Which was to bring the leg over. That will no longer work. So maybe I'll try to take it away from me. Now I have to battle from body of side control. Again, so now I caught Enrique. Look at my legs. They're engaged. They're just not pressing hard with everything I have. But now I know it's on. So I will release for Enrique to possibly escape this. I regard. And this is how it's lower pace. It can go to higher pace, but it's lower intensity. That's the most important thing. But it can be a lower pace where I'm paying attention to see. For me to be able to come up, I need to post on my elbow. You could see now with the lower intensity without me worrying, like, if I make a mistake that the guy is going to break my arm, I know that if I make a mistake, it's not going to be absolutely horrible. I need to basically, okay, I tap, and then I, we continue to move on. But I'm posting on my elbow to make sure that I can come up rather than ch trying to scramble up and, and kind of winding up with some uh, suboptimal result. 
all right? So when, when I floor roll, guys, uh, I want it to be constructive also. So I have a kind of an idea what I'm working on. This is one of the uh, most underrated things in, in jiu-jitsu uh, what, that people just go in and just train, especially the guys that, that, you know, if you train only two or three times a week, generally speaking, your body is good because you have recovered, so you feel beautiful and ready to, ready to bang, so to speak, right? <laughs> Well, guess what? You get a bang, you're not going to see what I, I remember, like it was yesterday, the guy was, you know, three or four stripe blue belt at Henzo's, and he, when, it was like, it, it was a tournament intensity. I subbed him with three different things within literally a minute and a half, and then he elbowed me in the head, cut me open, and I couldn't train anymore. Because he won? No. <laughs> I subbed him three times. But long story short, I, afterwards I asked him, I said, hey, I said, hey, do you remember what I, what submissions I hit you with? Uh, no. He couldn't remember one. How productive was that training for him? I, you don't even know what I hit you with. That means you're basically fighting for your life. Which means, okay, yeah, you do that in... Uh, the self-defensive area, obviously, but, uh, you know, maybe in a tournament where you go, just, just go. But uh, even that's probably, you know, but long story short, I, you know, he didn't learn anything in that, in that, in that role. So you want to be kind of a little bit, at, at the very least, understand what happened. So that way you could kind of like see how the setup works. Um, but you want to be productive and constructive, meaning that you want to have specific techniques. So I'm, right now I'm working on, on, a, on a variety of things, uh, including uh, improving my back take, which is quite good. I, I use the modified one, which I'm, I'm, I'm sure we've shown you in previous episodes. I'm working to make my omoplatas almost unescapable, which is difficult because omoplatas, you know, they're, they're, there's a variety of escapes. Uh, I'm working some of my takedowns uh, that, that I think have a lot of promise. And, uh, you know, I'm working some, uh, some additional transitions from sort of uh, uregatame or split guard into sort of uh, reverse and inverted triangles. So that's the things that I'm most focused on. So I try to hit those doing flow rolling because I, I can try to set them up. Sometimes it's not there, guys. Do not try to force something that's not there because then, then you go away from flow rolling. If it's not there, you're going to be like, I'm going to make it happen. And either puts you in a bad, bad position or worse yet, it's like you try to force things that are just not, you didn't create the circumstances for that. Again, let's go back to the reason for flow rolling. It's, it's to hone your transitions. All right? Now, a lot of times when I flow roll, uh, I go back, we rewind. There's many times, so I'm not talented, but I've been training so long that my body has started to kind of develop intuition of what is good and what is not good for jiu-jitsu. So I can literally be put into almost any position. And at, generally speaking, I will have a good reaction, meaning that I can respond in a, in a good way. But sometimes I don't realize what happened. Or sometimes I realize what happened, but it was not 100% right. It was 80% right. So I will, once that sequence is finished, I tell Enrique, hey, let's go back. And we do it like three times. Sometimes we film it. I have literally hundreds of, if not hundreds, hundreds of video, yeah. videos in my phone of things that I'm like, oh, this is pretty good. Let me, let me run with it. Let me see if I can make it better. Can I make it consistent? So that's sort of some of the, some of the big points of flow rolling. And also, it probably is these, the most fun aspect of jiu-jitsu and probably one of the most underrated um, training tools that you could have in jiu-jitsu. So, uh, again, guys, I would like to encourage you to go flow roll some more. Uh, drilling is high, you know, drilling is also important. We initially start drilling very slow and then build, build up speed. So with drilling, you're building a muscle memory for specific movement. So drilling is also very important. And, uh, but it's also, it's different. You usually, we do high repetitions and then you start really slow and then you start to build up speed. So uh, they're both highly underutilized, uh, you know, because I think these two aspects are what really gets your jiu-jitsu from the level that it's today to the higher level within weeks or months, as opposed to just kind of banging heads. That's, yes, that will get your, your, your jiu-jitsu better, but it's, it's more of a, 
uh, more of a workout, you know, working your cardio, working your, your, your technique under pressure. However, as far as just building incremental skills, uh, these two things are the most important things in, in training. John, what do we got? Got a variety of topics today, a lot of comments on slow rolling. Good morning, guys. Um, first from baseball, and he's uh, been practicing the Bon Flu. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's, he's um, not fully getting into commission. He wants to know if there's like an angle change or something he can do to help. To yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's go over that. So Bon Flu, uh, just lay down. So one of the best ways to, to practice Von Flu, and it's basically the, I can do, I can Von Flu people from being in a buggy choke. I can Von Flu people from, uh, you know, when they screw up uh, um, the guillotine and I just pass to the opposite side of my head, pass, pass my body to the opposite side of my head. Um, I can also do it, from, uh, I can do it from the guard too. But the, the way to hone that shoulder forward movement, by the way, it's, this movement in, in jiu-jitsu is very important. It's, it's, it's the ability to roll your shoulder forward. I use that movement from top side control. I use that movement from arm triangles. I use that movement in guillotines. So it's a very ubiquitous, the big word of the day, movement in jiu-jitsu that you should really be familiar with. And it's critical for a good von flu. So the best way probably to, to practice that movement is top side control. So when I'm, when I'm uh, trying to von flu people, we're going to go over, I'm going to actually Von Flew Enrique from the guard, but right now from side control, what I do is I allow him to come slightly towards me, my hand. So it's, do you ever see a guy slicing sushi? Japanese chef, they kind of use this sort of movement with the knife. So we're slicing sushi. And I want to get my hand, not on his spine, but under his shoulder blade. Under his shoulder blade. Once it's there, it's going to be palm up. And then I slowly transition. I didn't even get my weight into him, meaning that, that you know, I'm still partially on my knees. But that's how, so, so it's, so as I'm slicing sushi, once I start to transition weight and I start to roll my shoulder forward. I'm not doing this exaggerating, using a lot of strength. What I'm doing is just literally transitioning my weight slowly and deliberately to make sure that I know exactly the right placement. Guys, placement, uh, that's one of the also underrated things. That's also, I, I, I really practice good placement because good placement is something that makes your technique work. Uh, it makes the escape much less likely. And if they do escape, it also... Uh, puts them in, a, in a another difficult position. So when you're doing this, uh, you want to work your placement as well. So let's look at it one more time. This is probably the best place to, to practice. So again, I'm top side control. So I start with my palm down, but as I'm going, I slice the sushi, maybe medium fatty tuna. Now I'm going to do the same thing from guard. So Enrique is going to guillotine me. And you know from watching our videos that this is a poor, poor execution of a guillotine. So again, slice the sushi. And now I know he's going to try to cut the angle to try to constantly create more on, uh, of an angle to, for the guillotine to work. So as he's cutting the angle, so am I. But I focus on bringing the pressure forward. That's a punishment for a badly executed guillotine. Uh, again, if you've been watching us for a while, you know that if you're guillotining people, especially no arm guillotine, you need to have them next to you, not in your guard. This is one of the biggest mistakes people make all the time. A guy is like, grabs the head, jumps to put the guy in the guard, and the guy's head pops out. You see it in MMA. In M MMA, this is catastrophic. Because if I can't von flu you, guess what I'm going to do? Light you up like a candle. All right. Well, maybe your candle is kind of weak. Mm. Like a jet engine. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> now, what else we got, John? We got a special request here. We actually got a lot of questions today, but this one's from Mike in oh, Austin. Man. We miss you, man. He asked if he if we, we could do the uh, triangle on Enrique um, with uh, 
from guard with a sleeve and mustache ripped. Sleeve and mustache ripped. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of sleeve and collar, sleeve and mustache. Okay. And frown and go, what? You're not doing that. Sure we are. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for... So, so here, so he's got to follow his mustache. I need to get my... So guys, why am I refusing to do the, 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 do the triangle? Right now. Because I'm not letting you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not set up properly. You could see that Enrique. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. So he's not letting me get my f left foot on his hip. So I, again, do not do submissions that are not properly set up. So I will place my foot shin to shin because this foot is, is just too easy to, to slip off. Right? So I start to push with my left. Now I can do it. No. <laughs> but what's going to hold my shin? <laughs> I need my hands. One to cut the angle, yeah. one to hold. So as we just proven. Control the posture with the mustache. <laughs> the mustache. <laughs> so that may not be quite possible. Because no. I need my hand to hold my shin, not to grab. I, I just did a seminar in North Carolina, and people was like, I said, what's the moral of the story? About three people said, grab your shin. I said, no. Grabbing implies that you can let it go. Hold your shin. Mm. So one hand cuts the angle, the other one holds the shin. So no, Mike, it's not possible. What else we got? We have additional ball questions on the wrong position for only topic. There's a lot of other topics on here. Yeah, guys, it's a very underrated submission. It's You really... You need to have a good von flu because it, it's, you know, we, we talked about it and when it comes to buggy chokes, if we talk about it when it comes to guillotines, again, you know, if, if it's a well-executed, uh, you know, uh, uh, submission, it's, it's not easy, but most people hit, uh, you know, guillotines and uh, buggy chokes in a way that allows you to, to do that. The first one uh, follow up on the, the von flu is a lad, and I think he's thinking of a five finger choke, but he says you don't need another hand on the other side of the, uh, of the neck. No, no, it's, uh, we talked about this before, you, in order to make somebody tap or to put somebody out, you do not need to constrict both carotids. You didn't want to tell the story? How you no, I'm not going to talk, I'm not going to tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> We've already said that, tell that story. So, yeah, you need just one carotid. Uh, you know, if, if you cut off the flow on one side enough, that, that's enough. Follow-up uh, question from Sivo on just a little bit more detail on the shoulder pressure of the actual, like, so, uh, getting the submission from that position. So basically, it's precision. So what I'm looking to do is, you know, shoulder is a pretty big, pretty big muscle. Well, maybe not on me, but... <laughs> <laughs> we get a flow roll. We get a flow roll. So I repeat Guys, there's such a thing as an angry flow roll. We're going to go over that at the end. <laughs> so one of the things... So I'm trying to get this part of my shoulder right here on the carotid. So basically, so you can see, you know, you have about this much of, of, of muscle. Maybe some guys have a little bit more, but this much where you can place. But this part, this bulge, yeah, it is a bulge, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Your bulge on the neck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if we were not going live, I'd have somebody cut this out. <laughs> but we are live. <laughs> so, you want to do, so, you want to get the bulge on the neck? <laughs> I move, so I, I do it dry. So, again, if Enrique's head was right here, what I'm going to do is slice the sushi. So the angle is here. It, here, you can see it's as I'm rolling my shoulder forward, it can only get so far. But as I bring my hand in, it starts to naturally drop it into the carotid. So you need to work about the placement. For me, and for most people, it's good placement if you have your forearm on the floor. If your forearm is off the floor, the chances are it's not going to work that well. This is also critical for arm triangles. So as I'm slicing... And then I slowly transition. But usually by now, people tap. But notice I'm not like this. No tension. Open your legs so you have good stability. And then just slight tilt. That's it. You want to have good stability. So again, 
slice the sushi, roll it out. So again, this hand wants to be under the shoulder blade, not on the spine, that's too much. Not on the shoulder, on the shoulder blade, and then slowly transition the weight in. And just like that, we're out of time. Your bulge back then is like, no. <laughs> 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 All right, guys, so uh, I'm traveling next week, so we'll figure out what to do if I can film from the road or We'll figure it out, guys. I will see you next week for episode 20. Guys, yeah. like, share, subscribe. All that yeah, stuff. help us spread the word, guys. Exactly. Now we, uh, John seemed to have figured out the, the sound where I, I listened to the last one. Somebody will always complain, but I believe yeah, last week was good. Guys. All right, and so we're still working on, there's, you know, guys, we're not wired. You will know when we're wired because I'm going to be jumping on. We're wired. Uh, but we're not wired here yet. We're still using the old equipment. We just still we just figured out I think sort of the, that perfect balance of not picking up too much background noise and making it loud enough. We'll see you next week.